Hello, my name's John Passmore Edwards. Thank you very much for coming for my, to my 200th birthday party. I'm glad you didn't mind that I'm dead. I've been dead for 112 years, but I thought I'd come back just to tell you a bit about me, a bit about this building that you're in, and a bit about, ooh, technology, money, things like that. I was born in Cornwall, in 1823, we were very poor. My dad tried to make money, he wasn't very good at it. I tried to get an education, but there was no education to be had. Education was something that the rich had. I just went to a Dane school, it weren't very good. I came across a book now and again, but most of the time, in my childhood, 1820s, 1830s, there were no books. No books. Can you imagine it? I wanted to read. I was desperate to read. I read, I read missionary tracts. God, they was dull. I read, I read books on science. They looked interesting, but I didn't understand them. I read anything I could get hold of. Eventually, I thought, I'm going to make words my living. So I started to write and to publish and to make money. And I thought I was doing really quite well. I really did. Only it turned out I wasn't. And I went bankrupt. You might think that's a sad story. You might think that's the ruination of me. That, me going bankrupt... That was the making of me, and I'll tell you why. I went bankrupt, and I had lots of people that I owed money to. The law didn't say I had to pay them off, because I went bankrupt. But my morals said I had to pay them off. So I started writing again, I started publishing again, and the money started coming in. And one by one, I paid them off. And then I just kept going. And what happens? I become a rich man. A lot of the things I published, they were for quite ordinary people. So building news was for the building trade, which is fine. But what it meant was a lot of my money came from ordinary people. So I thought, you know, I thought I ought to give something back. So I became a politician. I became an MP for Salisbury in 1880, and I thought, this is how I'm going to change the world. Anyway, I was an MP for 10 years, and I learned that as an MP for Salisbury, you don't get to change the world, at least not much. So I stopped all that, and I thought, I've got all this money. I need to give things back, and I started to pay for things that would benefit ordinary working people. I paid for working men's clubs. I paid for hospitals. There's an hospital just down the road here in Acton. I paid for that. I paid for, I paid £4,000 for this library. It cost £6,690 to put up and £4,000 of that was mine. So six out of every 10 bricks you see here, I paid for them. And why? Well, Attitudes towards poorer people, and I still thought about poor people because that's what I've been, they changed. Instead of just being a burden on society, people thought, no, we ought to do something for them. So education, learning to read, everybody eventually got a chance to do that. And books, books, that changed. Instead of just being something for the rich, you could publish a book. As I found out, you could publish a book for very, very little money. And what you could do is, you could do something like this. So this is a book, look. It's about Dante. Dante, he's one of your classics, he is Dante. And it didn't cost much. And if you had a library, it didn't cost anything at all. If you weren't drawn to the classics, 
you could always get a different kind of book out. This one, for example, Acton History by Percival Jolliffe. That's a really interesting read, this one, because it tells you all about the way Acton used to be before it came up in the world. So look, there we go. There is a picture of Wegg Avenue. Now, you'll know that as Toyford Avenue, all lined with big posh houses, all changed, all changed. I paid for this library. I'm proud of that. I helped change things. And I was able to change things because the technology that this country was experimenting with at that time it changed the way people lived. I grew up in Cornwall. Cornwall was remote, far away. But then one day, the trains come and it changes. Even here in Acton, you've got railway stations coming out your ears, you have. You've got so many of them. And it meant that Acton, which had been like, you know, really quiet, it changed into an area that had um, um, lots of women working in the laundries. They were, there, there were so many laundries here. There were so many laundries. This place was known as Soapstud Island. And it used to be said, all you need to open a laundry is a wash tub, a woman, and a bottle of gin. And you think that's funny, don't you? I don't. All my life, I campaigned with the temperance movement. That is, you don't drink, not at all. And I know people now think, oh, that's funny. Oh, that's a killjoy. Oh, that's not going to have a party, is it? No, it isn't. But if you'd seen what I and my other temperance people had seen about how the drink could ruin people, you'd take it a lot more serious. I have to say, people might not have a temperance movement now, but my sources tell me, now, in 2023, young people, they don't drink like the generation that's in its 50s and 60s and 70s now. So there's hope. Thank you very much for coming to my birthday party. I hope you have a good time. Just to give you an illustration of how technology can put you in touch with other worlds, I'd like to show you this. It's a Triumph gramophone, and it was made in 1911, the time I stopped living in the real world. And what it can do is bring you music, all kinds of music. I'm gonna play you music now what was played in the Savoy Hotel. Isn't that amazing? Oh, right on cue. My lovely clocks are just gonna chime and remind us about how difficult it is to deal with time. Let's have some music. 